Something magical hung in the air that night. Perhaps the moon, nearly full and peeking through the canopy ringing the forest clearing, had something to do with it. Or maybe it was the soft spring wind, carrying the scent of new grass. It might even be the bonfire, leaping and dancing, calling to my soul fire. Cora! Tobias offered his hand, and our fingers intertwined, vampire and witch, in a ritual circle together. I used to think this odd, but now it was just a matter of course. Perhaps I was just sensing the coven itself? Before Mom and I moved to Connecticut two years ago, I never would have guessed other races of supernatural creatures would be allowed in witchy rituals. Now, I knew better. Apologies for my cold hands, Tobias whispered, his British accent thick with apprehension. No problem, I smiled to assure him I really didn't mind. With everything else going on, I'd barely noticed the ice of his skin. Coven Master Luca Moretti cleared his throat for order and raised his hands, making him the only open link in the ring. I thank everyone for joining us here this evening. We're an unusual coven. Luca's gaze fell on Tobias first, and then Gunner, on the vampire's other side. The wolf shifter gave a boyish grin. We're also the most inclusive coven I have ever known. Luca continued. The most like a family. For that, I'm grateful to share these moments with you. Finally, the coven master took the hands of those next to him. Let's close the celebration with what you've all been waiting for, some good old magical fun. The calling of family long departed. Gunner released a resounding whoop, pulling a smile out of our esteemed coven master. I've been waiting all night for this. Excitement brimmed in Tobias's eyes. I hope they show up quickly. I haven't got forever. Wait a minute. Gunner arched an eyebrow. Did you just make a joke, Toby? Tobias gave a mischievous shrug. It's been known to happen. Once or twice a century. The coven shared a laugh. The vampire was usually stiff and old-fashioned, but in the time I'd been a part of Shadows and Secrets, I'd learned he loved watching magic. Most vampires didn't get to view such proceedings. The witchy celebration of the spring equinox was putting him in a great mood. All right, all right. Calm down. Luca quieted the mirth. Let's begin. Around the circle, everyone fell silent. My heart began to race. I'd never seen a calling of the ancestors before. Ostara wasn't the most ideal sabbat to try it on, but I was still excited. A stream of Latin poured from Luca's lips. I didn't know what he was saying. The mage was far more knowledgeable than me when it came to magic, and particularly rituals. But I felt the tug of my power as it drifted to the center of the circle to join that of the other magic workers. Then, almost immediately, the air shifted and the bonfire glowed an unnatural purple hue. My heart warmed as the flames leapt ever higher. Inside me, the soul fire that made me what I was, a fire witch, burned more brightly. I wanted to work with the magic-drenched flames, but refrained. Barely. I didn't want to spoil my first Ostara with shadows and secrets. With the power vested in me as the coven master of shadows and secrets... Luca switched from Latin to English. I call upon the ancestors of this ancient society to welcome us into spring, to protect us, to guide us to do what is right. As spring grows ever stronger, I call upon the ancestors to shed light on our world. So mote it be, everyone chanted. The bonfire exploded upward, sparks and flames shooting for the stars glinting in the tapestry of night. My heart stuttered as, suddenly, a ghost appeared in the fire. You called. The ghost's voice echoed, raising goosebumps on my skin. I'll be, Gunner muttered. Next to me, Tobias stiffened. The ghost seemed to catch his eye, a sliver of a smile on his lips. Had he known the deceased who had once been a part of S&S? &S? 